have a look at the Treasury market itself because we've actually snapped on two days of gains. It's about data and it's about the nuances of the Federal Reserve. Today it's about consumer spending mark. That's going to be the driver for the bond markets. PIMCO say this, before we get into what Lacker said, we're at a tipping point. The July note from PIMCO, Bill Gross, we are at a tipping point. But don't panic. The ship is not sinking. And uh, he said that the Fed has basically tilted the situation over risked traders to one side of the boat. So to a certain extent, I think what he's saying, a bit of the froth is coming out of the market. But they've seen outflows from their fund for the first time and since May 2011. And he says the Fed's moves will, of course, be contingent on the economic forecasts, Absolutely. which are too bullish. He says the Fed's forecasts are too bullish. Overly optimistic. But the move in the bond market yesterday was ostensibly to do with bad news is good for bonds. In other words, weaker than estimated GDP, the payroll tax came in. Now, Jeffrey Lacker really has said, look, the expansion remains sluggish. It will do for a couple of years. The economy is telling us, look, this is as much as we're capable of right now. And it's going to be disappointing going forward. But beware, we're nowhere near the exit. This asset purchase tapering is just slowing the rate at which we're increasing uh, the balance sheet. So uh, we're not anywhere near um, decreasing the balance sheet yet. Look, part of the argument about Bernanke's roadmap on whether it's tapering or exit, and it's certainly not exit, seems to be the consensus, is he wanted to take some of this over-junkied, over-leveraged froth out of the market. Lacker really emphasizes that it's a reality check for the markets. I think uh, maybe markets got a little bit ahead of us in terms of what they were expecting by how long, by way of how long these purchases would continue. And I think they've gotten into better alignment now with, with, with our, the committee's expectations. But for Lacker, it's going to be about the employment data mark. That's what he emphasized. Um, accommodation is plentiful, and Bernanke has done an excellent job. How to stay on form with your boss. Bernanke has done an excellent job in guiding the market, describing where the committee is and, and really what to anticipate. So that's Lacker. Um, it's William Dudley today. Okay, he's the New York Federal Reserve President and Dennis Lockhart. So, again, we're going to be back on those nuances of language and what they mean, what it really means for the bond market. Um, how do you make this story actually come alive? There's a couple of really big names on the global bond markets, I think, that personify the risks and the reality of when these people speak. Blue Crest Capital Management, I mean, they've got like $35 billion under management. They've got a hedge fund, which, which basically uses computer systems to track momentum in various assets, down 8.3% on the month mark. Now, put it in context, since they built that fund in 2004, don't want to have bad, nasty notes from the Blue Crest, Blue, Blue Crest management into Bloomberg this morning. Um, that has delivered a return of 13% since 2004. So, you know, not just bond funds. I mean, PIMCO are under pressure. They're one of the worst performing bond funds this year in the United States. Um, but Bluecrest, a real, I, I suppose, a real personification of how you manage money, how you manage wealth. And Bevan Howard, their emerging market fund, Mark, is down almost 8% in June. funds as well. Yes. One great study I read about, which I know you'll love, is from Goldman Sachs, which says uh, it takes $1 trillion in bond purchases to move long-term interest rates by 40 basis points. What a coincidence. The 10-year Treasury yield has moved by 40 basis points since Ben Anke spoke, which basically means the reaction is roughly the equivalent to if the Fed revealed a plan mm -hmm. to cut back on QE by one trillion dollars. And as you say, there's no plan no. to cut QE no. by one trillion dollars. Maybe if the economy improves, they'll taper. But the movement in the Treasury market, Goldman Sachs is says, the equivalent is the equivalent of a trillion removal. And as we know, the balance sheet will keep growing even if they start to taper. Some great articles. Absolutely. And I think for me, you know, having, having spent a bit of time with a couple of these Fed presidents, it was interesting that Rosengren said he'd spent more time on GDP economics than he ever occurred to in his, entire, in his entire career, Mark. So GDP, people can say, oh, it's historical, it's historical. Well, when you hear a Fed president actually say, I've spent a ruthless amount of time in the past six months studying it, it's obviously not that backward or that irrelevant.